Well, this is really an odd position to make a video, but I wanted to make a point. I wanted to show you my um, video editing companion. It's Kitten here. Uh, when I'm kind of doing scripts for videos or editing them, I'm on my little laptop and I'm right here on the couch and she's always right next to me. Now, if I close this laptop, then she's always on my lap. I mean, Kitten is always there when you need her. And we've had Kitten for 17 years. Uh, we were with the kids when they were younger at a, uh, oh, a local farm in the fall. They do that harvest tour. And someone had dropped off some kittens and we saw this little black kitten and all these kids were playing with her and, you know, almost ending up to torture her, right? And I looked at her, didn't need a cat, but uh, we ended up taking Kitten home with us. And originally she was called Gidget because she was a girl midget. She just wasn't growing, but eventually she did. So Kitten has been part of our family for a long time. Well, she started to look kind of scrappy. Um, she was losing hair right here in her paws. Uh, her fur just didn't look as good as normal and you know she lost weight we didn't realize how much weight until we took her into the vet but she just wasn't herself so I thought well she's getting old she's 17 years old right that happens with cats but then I was at work and I was talking to another person at work and she mentioned that they found out their cat had hyperthyroidism disease and she was describing the symptoms and one of them was a little bit more unkept appearance increased urination uh, increased eating uh, being more lethargic or excuse me being more active um, a lot of different symptoms anyway I'm starting to think hmm kittens lost weight kittens fur is not what it used to be you know what? I think I'll have her tested for that at the vet. So my husband brought her to the vet, and guess what? Here's the results of her test. As you can see, she was in the high range, and she is hyperthyroid. So what does that mean? Well, one of the reasons I want to bring this up is I wanted you all to know if you had a cat, especially an older cat, over 12 years old, this is something that can happen, and it can be manageable and actually it's the most common glandular disorder in cats rarely seen in dogs and of course hyper hyperthyroidism is seen in uh, people I myself am hypothyroidism just the opposite but a lot of times it goes undetected and what happens is there is an excessive concentration of the hormone known as T4 and that can cause problems with kidneys, heart disease, and a lot of other organs. So it's a pretty serious condition. Now I'm gonna read right here to tell you, less than 6% of the cases uh, of cats presented with hyperthyroidism were younger than 10 years of age. Uh, the average age of onset is between 12 and 13 years. And I guess, kitten was a little late or maybe she had it for some time and we just didn't catch it. Now when she went to the vet she had originally weighed 11 pounds and she was down to 7 pounds. So that was a 4 pound loss. Again I thought she was looking rather svelte and uh, it was due to aging. But I was wrong. They also say for symptoms that vomiting is present in 50% of the cats. Again, cats occasionally vomit, right? Uh, and we have three cats. Can't always find a cat vomiting, so I don't know if that was one of her symptoms or not. So what is the treatment for the disease? Well, there's oral medication. There's radioactive iodine therapy, surgery, and some people say a dietary therapy. Now, out of the four, I would say oral medication is the most inexpensive way to go. Now for the oral medication, you have to keep getting those blood tests till they get the amount right. Uh, kitten here is taking 
uh, her medication morning and night. And it has gotten her back in the normal range. Um, her fur has grown back on here. And I think she's a bit perkier. She still seems to have uh, at more of an excessive thirst, you know, need for water. But maybe that's just because I'm looking at it and noticing it. So the oral medication is called Methaimazole, which is brand name Tapazole. And they say that though 15 to 20 percent of cats can have side effects, especially the first three months on this drug. And it can um, loss of appetite, vomiting, lethargy, blood clotting problems, jaundice, itching around the head and face, and occasionally blood cell abnormalities. Kitten really has had none of that. She is fine. Um, and at her age, she's not real, real active. She hasn't been for some time. So the medication is relatively inexpensive. Um, you have to go through the hassle of giving her meds. I'll show you that. Okay, she's on five megs of this medication, morning and night. So we have to give it twice. Does she enjoy that? No, she does not. Very good. But she tolerates it. So I just go like this, go like this. And that's it. Now she's taking her medication. So actually it's pretty easy. You can get the same medication in a form that's gel and you actually rub into their ear. But I think it's working for her and we're definitely going to keep up with this line of therapy. Now you can also have radioactive iodine therapy. It can only be at certain um, places so that might not even be offered where you live. And it is very expensive. Now, the majority, they say, of cats treated with this therapy have normal um, levels of T4 in one to two weeks. And then, of course, you don't have any medication. It's constant. Now, surgery is just like for peeps. Some have to have the removal of the thyroid gland. The same thing can happen in the cats. Again, you are up to a bigger expense. And for an older cat, Anesthesia can be rather dangerous, but they've had good results with it. Now, the one that's a little bit more controversial is the dietary therapy. Um, they say that limiting the iodine in the diet may help cats. Um, so there are some products you can buy, food products. But there's some studies says that could bite, backfire and it could actually make uh, worse. So there are a lot more research has to go into that area. But I just wanted to share this with you because maybe you have a precious cat like Kitten here. Uh, you want to talk to him? No. Who is a big part of your family and you just notice they aren't seeming the way they were before. And you're thinking, hey, it's age, you know. We all get a little bit uh, different as we age. Um, it might not be. It could be hyperthyroidism. So I just wanted to bring this all to your attention because to be honest, until that gal in the office mentioned it, I didn't even know cats got thyroid disease. So for me, it opened my eyes and got her treatment immediately. And we're really happy with her progress. Has she gained a lot of weight yet? No, not really. But you know what? She was overweight before, so actually, maybe she's at a better weight. So, this is Prepper Potpourri. I just wanted to share with you my experiences because, as always, as we share the knowledge, we all become better informed. So, if your cat has had um, hyperthyroidism, I wondered what you did for treatment and how did it work. Please comment below. As always, thank you so much for your patronage.